I'm Sam Clark. And I'm Sarah Sloman. And we're about to attempt a Guinness World Record for the longest journey on a single charge on an electric motorbike. We're about 10 miles short still. What? How? How have we ended up here again? How much sleep have you had? <laughs> oh, three hours. <laughs> Is this your first Guinness World Record? It is my first Guinness World Record. I love the positivity there. We are going to get it today. Sam Clark, two Guinness World Records, going for a third today. It's your birthday. Are you nervous? Yeah, always a little bit nervous for these attempts, of course, especially this one because we've never attempted anything like this before. The dynamic duo would be taking on a mammoth route, darting in and out of London, all on two wheels. I'm doing a bit of a track, but I like to get fresh on GPS early. That's all that's what's happening. When they tell us they're ready to go, you guys seal it up. Make sure it seals up. The sealing of the charge flap was essential to ensure that they didn't steal any cheeky charges on the route. Then, once they're ready, they'll go out, start their track up, and out we go. Are you nervous? I am a bit. You know, it's mostly about riding in London. I mostly ride rurally, so for me, it's about not getting lost, it's about not losing any efficiency, and trusting a GPS is not my usual style. <laughs> We're going to need to hit at least 180, that's what's been set officially, but I personally would love to hit 200, anything over 200 would definitely make it harder for anybody else to take away. Okay, what are you most worried about today on the roads of London here in the UK? The UK's roads can be so unpredictable, we don't know if there's suddenly going to be a road closure, we've had to meticulously plan this route as per the spirit of the event, so any diversions or getting split up is going to be a little bit of a challenge because of course with a motorbike you've got your helmet but you can't be constantly in communication with people so you're kind of on your own. Um, okay, tell me a little bit about that bike, the, the Batmobile, if Batman had a motorbike it <laughs> might look a bit like that. I think it already did kind of look a lot like that. So this bike is one of a kind, that wheel is very special, cleverly engineered and designed and we're going to be putting it through its paces. So this is 100% electric and it is built for speed. We have a 0-60 of 3.5 seconds. It's got a thousand newton meters of torque, which means it is a twist and go scenario. The Verge TS Pro, the world's most advanced electric motorcycle, featuring unique architecture. The motor being in the wheel allows for the body to be free for just the battery pack and more battery equals more range. Tell us a little bit about your co-pilot for today. The wonderful Sam Clark. So we're going to be taking in turns. Probably every hour or 90 minutes we're going to need to stop, not least of all for rider brakes, but also for driver brakes. We've got a whole convoy. It had been a simple start to the day. Both the traffic and the weather have thankfully been kind. So with 15 miles under his belt and the team in tow, Sam rolled into Walton-upon-Thames for the duo's first changeover. All right, yeah, it's good. It's good. A bit of traffic at the end was annoying, but we got before that it was nice and smooth. We got a good chunk of miles in and the state of charge is still looking good so so far so good how's your body doing it's fine it's fine so far Ooh. it's fine ask me again later you ready for your first stint yeah i am i think the last bit was pretty tricky with traffic so i'm just hoping for a smoother flow through to the hampton port palace and on to twickenham so you've done it in a van you've done it in a car this time two wheels How's that going to change your tactics? Well, it will change the tactics. We've got a different landscape to navigate around on purpose now, around Greater London, which is going to be the most efficient place to use the bike. What's going to be the hardest thing about driving a, a motorbike in London? Well, London's obviously a very busy place. Um, we've got uh, lots of support crew as well to consider, as well as us riding through. So we just need to try and be as smooth as possible. Um, not too much stop-start, but also we don't want to have too much high speed either. What's the experience like driving an electric vehicle compared to a petrol motorcycle? Yeah, I'm lucky actually. I need two hands to count the number of motorcycles I've ridden, and some of those were indeed petrol. And what I know from my petrol friends who I ride with is what number one, that they have to refuel before I do, and number two, they're paying something between sort of 11 and 12 pence per mile, whereas I'm paying between one and two. But it's very quiet as well. That must be quite, so um, quite nice. So quiet. It's so responsive, and I absolutely love the weighting of this bike. It's got a really long wheelbase, which means you just ever so slightly lean and it just drifts around the corner. It's gorgeous. It's about time we explain the team behind this monumental record attempt. So it's a big challenge today with Sam and Sarah, so we're here to support as always. What the AA do so well for us on these challenges is they just give us that peace of mind that if we push the equipment too far, they're there to pick up the pieces and help us. Yeah, Richard Parker is everything EV. He works with Webfleet and leads them on what the 
community need in terms of data, telemetry, tracking, monitoring. If there is no power there and that thing switches off, the device can't close the trip off. And Richard himself, he and I were both up at four o'clock this morning trying to get everything sorted for today and the data has to be flawless. Everybody can track the bike, everybody knows what's going on with the bike battery and the expected range. How has the experience been so far, Sarah? I had to stop myself from being a little emotional about it about half an hour ago. It's just cruising around on streets I've never been on. We've dodged the hail, the sun is fantastic, the bike has surpassed its expectation at this stage. And so I just feel like it's an incredible privilege to be rolling around on a piece of machine like this and how technology can unlock your own self-belief. I never thought that I could do something like this. After many changeovers between Sam and Sarah, Night fell upon London, bringing new challenges as Sam took what he thought would be his final shift behind the bars. So Sam, deep into world record territory, how are you holding up? I'm doing all right, Ricardo, I'm doing all right. It's, I'm, I'm buoyed by the bike, it's doing a good job. Um, I'm just about holding it together as well. It's been a long day, but we're still going, we're still going strong. Uh, the percentage is looking good, the mileage is looking good, so at the moment I'm pretty confident. I've got to say, uh, you and Sarah have been absolute troopers today, you must be very proud of her. I'm immensely proud of her, she's been amazing, she's done a hugely contributive job, she's been doing miles and miles on the bike, and in addition to that, you know, you guys, Regenerate Media, Webfleet again have been fantastic. Without accurate data that represents true GPS tracking, you, you can't verify a record like this. It needs the technology, you know, for this record, you know, we've had to be a bit innovative in how we've connected. It's a brand new bike, it's really exciting. You know, these are, this is new on the road, you know, so for us, it's even tested us to say, how do we get the data that Guinness World Records need to verify what we're doing? It's been great. Kevin Booker, my co-driver in the World Records has been with us as well, uh, doing all of the support driving all day long. It's a massive team effort, it's always a team effort. Little bit of a problem for me doing a bike record. I don't have a motorbike license, so that means I'm on the support driver role for a change. So the support car for today has been the uh, new Polestar 4. For supporting these records, the distances are getting much longer and you need a support car that can actually go further than the, the bike. So this Polestar, when driven gently, it is easily a 400 mile range car. So it's got the range to support the record and not to worry about that you're gonna run out before the record bike is. And with that, the final changeover had arrived and it was time to talk strategy. 19 miles to give us two miles beyond the required in, yeah, in the one English one. Some point after 15.08, you need to pull over, but it turned the ignition off. Uh, yeah, I need and a, a minute after that, the trip will end and then it will start to pull for the distance. Then we can turn it back on again yeah. and you go to the stop because I cannot guarantee that if you go flat, I'm going to get you the date. So, Confident? Uh, yeah, definitely. However, we are entering into tiredness, greasy roads. We have survived 12 hours of riding so far. This just shows that a bike like this can do anything. And I feel really proud of that. So shall we get ready to roll? Good luck. Uh, yeah, last thing was good. Uh, a little bit tired now. We've got 19 miles to go. Sarah's just left uh, to do the last piece, uh, and then hopefully we're going to hit our target. I'm all right. I'm, I'm sort of adrenaline's buzzing. I'm a little bit tired, but you know, these are records, and they're there to be broken. Why does it matter that people try and achieve these crazy records? So uh, it's, it's, let me correct you slightly. There's no such thing as a crazy record, right? Everybody has a passion. So you're crazy could be somebody else's passion. They are top of the world. So they are ultimately the goal. This is not UK records or this is not European records. These are Guinness World Records. So this is the top, the very top. There was jubilance in the air as Sarah rolled into what she thought would be the finish line. You happy that we've gone far enough? I, I, yes, I think so. Okay. Oh, I'm definitely happy. Look, this thing. No, I think I'm so because we, we, we're dealing with. I haven't yeah. got odometer stuff like we had before. Wee! <laughs> where, where are we going to do the champers? How was it? How was the final final oh, stint? It was tough. Everybody knows on endurance things, it's always the last hour where things go wrong. Potholes, the deer, <laughs> the foxes, the slippery white lines, the bus stops, the scooter drivers, the drunk people. It was a lot. <laughs> How does it feel to be a Guinness world record holder? I think I've wanted this my whole life. So for me, 
<laughs> I'm going to be unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> However, Richard had a bombshell to drop. So, on what it's pulled and what we've managed to capture, we're about 10 miles short still. What? Oh, okay, that's just marvellous, isn't it? On one of the trips, we've only done 175 yards. So at some point, the GPS has lost signal. So that whole journey where we should have been picking up satellite has, has lost. That's why speedometer, we've done, we've done it, 187. But GPS, because we lost that signal there, we're down 10 miles. So. The GPS is what verifies the record. Yeah. So unless you get that to one... Oh, it doesn't matter, we're still here, but at the same time, it. that's crazy. So we've got charge. Well, I'm glad we didn't pop the champagne. GPS terms, London's quite fragile. We were seeing we've got things like tunnels that we've been through for a mile where GPS doesn't work. We've got high buildings where GPS struggles. So we've got to the what we thought was the end based on odometer stuff. Um, odometer's not good enough for our friends at the Guinness World Records. How have we ended up yet again with this sort of jeopardy going down a road and got this what time of night eating out the miles to get another record? How have we ended up here again? But here's the thing, I guess we're learning, right? It's a Guinness World Record. Yeah. So you don't stretch the boundaries unless you are pushing the boundaries. Finally Westfield, and hopefully victory was in sight. An exhausted Sam was greeted by a very relieved team. Long day, but an amazing day. You guys must be very proud of what you've achieved. We were both punching the air in Ascot, and then suddenly Richard Parker dropped a bombshell. How did you feel? I was quite robbed, to be, gone, to be honest, because we'd set it up such that Sam started the day, I ended the day, and then we went to play. We were going to go and have playtime for the last hour and just see what the bike could really do. After 16 hours on the road, nearly 200 miles covered, and mission accomplished, the Verge TS Pro still had more to give. But for the safety of both the riders and the data, it was time to call it. Why are you doing this? What was the point? We were really taken with this piece of equipment. We wanted to push it to its limits. We wanted to show people that two wheels is a viable alternative to a four-wheel electric motor. And I wanted to show that in London, it's a perfect beast. Two decades ago, I was riding around London in an electric scooter. And here I am 20 years later, breaking world records in an electric scooter motorbike in London. So it's full circle for me. And it just proves technology has moved on. And wow, can it really deliver now? The Verge guys provided all of this. They, they provided the vehicle, the, the setup for it all. And then we've got the Webfleet team, the telemetry, you guys with General Media, and of course the, the AA um, always there to support us as well. And then luckily, we didn't need them, but they were always there in case we did. Birthday boy, not a bad, not a bad treat for him. It's a pretty risky strategy. It's either the best birthday or the worst, but I think it should be the best. With more than 289.7 kilometers, Sun Club, Sarah Slow, and Birch Motorcycling, you are the new Phoenix Warrior for Stuttgart. Four. Four. The longest journey made by an electric vehicle for a single child. Congratulations. And you are officially amazing. Well done. Bravo. A phenomenal achievement that truly shows the art of the possible, especially when Sam, Sarah and the bike wanted to go even further. But we're sure this will only add fuel to their fire as they set their sights on future records on the road to net zero. <laughs>